Uh, morning, June 17th, 10.17 a.m. UK time. And let's take a look at Bitcoin. How are we doing today? Um, do, do, do. Up eight. Uh, up eight hundred sixty-two dollars at two point two five percent, and USD price thirty-nine thousand two sixteen. Thirty-nine thousand two sixteen. Uh, yeah, looking good, isn't it? Looking good. Um, I think we're firmly in phase D of the wickoff. Uh, phase D of the wickoff is a resumption of the uptrend, and we definitely do have an uptrend in place. Uh, low, high. Higher low, higher high, and higher low. What was this low? Thirty-eight thousand zero ninety-five, and here today's low thirty-eight thousand two hundred and twenty-seven. Above the eighteen-day moving average, momentum looking to poke into positive territory. Maybe today, maybe for sure tomorrow. Right, and uh, let's throw on a Bollinger Band. Bollinger Band. Uh, upper Bollinger, Bollinger Band is curving up and uh, it is looking good. We've kind of got a bull flag situation going on. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, it's a $6,000 flagpole. Yeah, $6,000 flagpole, uh, which should, should and could take us up into this region here. And so it's important to remember, uh, I've got this $58,000 kind of line up here. I think we could reach that probably next month even, uh, which will shock a few uh, people, observers of the crypto market, right? Their strong bounce back. And uh, what was the area where people got in? Um, 53,000 is where a lot of new wallets and buyers came in, actually. Uh, new hands, new buyers, new investors, and it was kind of exhaustion. Uh, exhaustion because we came from 10,000, uh, so hitting the 60k uh, level, 64, 64, 89, 895. That was a peak right here, uh, April 14th. Um, ultimately, was an exhaustion of uh, impetus of new buyers, right? And so, these uh, new investors who got in at 53 plus. Um, what did they do during this dump? Uh, did they uh, kind of believe the fear? The fear was actually kind of extreme, right? It was a extreme uh, period. Uh, even the fear even got me, right? The fear even got me because uh, it had the potential of going back down to 20, 20k as a retest, a reset moment, but. Uh, a 55%, uh, well, what, what would you call that? Almost a bear, almost a bear. 40%, up to 50% is considered, I would say, a retracement in Bitcoin, highly volatile. But highly volatile is a requirement, is a feature, not a bug, to what to propel us up to these levels here, right? 80, 90, 100, right? Uh, which I do believe is still going to occur in 2021. And if we go back, let's take a broader view of Bitcoin. Let's take off the Bollinger Band. And let's take a look at the monthly candles. Um, it's actually kind of reminiscent of gold. I'll bring up a gold chart in a minute. Um um, but it's all condensed, right? It's happening much faster. The network effect is real. Uh, if you look at the new wallets being created for Bitcoin, it is uh, looking good. So a function of Bitcoin's rise is a network effect, obviously. I've been talking about that on my Medium blog for uh, quite a while now. And if you can see, uh, if that is wave one, if we do Elliott Wave, a broad look at Elliott Wave, Wave 1, Wave 2, Wave 3, Wave 4. And if this is the start of Wave 5, and um, you should break it up into five waves. 1, 2, COVID crash, 3, and that 55% retracement, well, kind of almost a bear, right? Wave 4, this is potentially of the Wave 5. And Wave 5 uh, can indeed be the longest and strongest so if that was a 6x a 7x from 30,000 that will take us to $210,000 and let me just show you the 
goal chart, I think it took a bit of a hammering yesterday. Uh, sorry for talking about other assets that are not digital, but let's uh, take a quick peek. Yeah, down $54. Uh, down $54, but what I wanted to show you, if you look out on a longer term view, it's kind of similar to Bitcoin. So like I said, Bitcoin has done what gold has done, but in a condensed uh, fashion, right? So look at this bottom. June, July 1st, 1976, got your wave one. Uh, basically, a 20-year well, wave two, Wave three, wave four, and now the waves are actually getting shorter. So this is a, basically a decade. So that was half of this twenty-year uh, wave two, and wave four is only five years. And if this is wave five, you got uh, how would we draw this? One, two, three, four, five, and how high will go gold go? Uh, if it is of concern to you, I would say. Minimum of three, potentially $5,000, but it's going to take longer than Bitcoin to complete wave five, right? Uh, so what could it be? Two, three, four years, five years? Possibly, right? But it will get up there uh, against the backdrop of central bank uh, expansion, expansion, right? Uh, last year was, I believe, 35%. New dollars were created by the Fed, and if it continues or at a pace of a slowing pace, maybe 10 15 percent, that is still a huge number. So, against the nominator of USD assets, should still go up. And but back to crypto, uh, if we look at uh, something like Dogecoin, right? Uh, this is why I kind of have it on the top of my watch list. Uh, what started out as a joke, a meme, even the creator, I think Jackson Palmer is his name, uh, kind of walked away from the crypto space in kind of disgust, uh, like a lot of people do. People do kind of uh, walk away from crypto after a few years. Uh, understandable, they get kind of uh, fed up with the toxic nature of crypto which it can be but as we get you know more mature money uh, more seasoned money managers and uh, that's by that toxic toxic nature should indeed change uh elon elon potentially creating a network effect of dogecoin right and elon understands attention yeah elon understands the attention market and if you uh, saw what happened in the Euro 2020, well, they still call it the Euro 2020s championships, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo wiped out $4 billion of Coca-Cola stock by simply moving two Coke bottles out of his uh, camera view, right? Um, and just saying the word agua, which is water. So... Uh, drink water, not Coke, <laughs> right? Uh, so attention market, important. And could Dogecoin, uh, kind of my thesis uh, last month or so, is why Elon is concentrating on Doge. Uh, he potentially can create a network effect using it as the currency for Tesla, you know, uh, you know, in-app purchases, in car in-app purchases, right, through Doge or something like that. That is potential. And what is still important with Doge, even though it has a large supply, 130 billion coins, I believe, and potentially it can create up to 5% a year. So what? No, 5.2 billion coins a year, I think it can produce uh, in its inflation uh, supply. So that is roughly around 4%. It's actually not too bad. 4%, I believe, is kind of roughly kind of where you want to be at uh, uh, for a coin like Doge, right? It enables enough inflation to uh, onboard, right? And onboarding is key if you want to create a, a network. And so Doge, I believe, is, I would say, can still garner the attention market quite more easily than Bitcoin. Uh, it's kind of the anti-elitist, anti-maximalist coin. Started off as a joke, a parody, right? A meme coin. Uh, but that doesn't discredit what it is. It's a 
digital uh, uh, asset with recorded ownership, right? And, and with digital assets compared to legacy, they are over collateralized, over collateralized. So, which uh, comparing to uh, legacy finance, which is tends to be under collateralized, over indebted, and cryptos are bearer assets with no debt, right? No debt. Uh, you have the coin, you have the asset in your wallet. Uh, that is your money. That is your money. So Doge, kind of like the social token, right? Kind of like the social token. And let's have a look at the hiking ashy candlesticks. Uh, what is it telling us? Well, still in a range. Still in a range, but um, kind of underperforming in Bitcoin for the last uh, week or so, right? 10 days. Uh, at this point here, it looked like it was going to break out. But it took another dump. Um, a dump of what? 20, 20%. 20%. But if you look at the momentum, momentum is showing divergence, positive divergence against the price action. And on the daily, I think the volatility, excuse me, volatility is, look at that, flat line. Flat line. Low volatility often precedes periods periods of high volatility, right? So we could see some movement in this sucker soon. We could see some movement in Doge very, very shortly. Um, let's let's to take a quick look at Litecoin, which is something I believe will outperform in the coming year or two, right? Uh, against B BTC. Um, again, we had this huge wipeout Huge wipeout, uh, almost 70%, 75%. Um, and the recovery has been muted, has been muted. Momentum still firmly negative uh, area under the zero. Uh, but we shall see. I think it still has potential. This doesn't look like a bear flag. A bear flag with this <laughs> this flagpole will send it into the negative zone, negative minus 200 which uh, unlike oil, I, cryptos cannot go too negative. Even a dead coin still normally trades for years at some sort of monetary value because it still has a uh, that digital bearer asset quality to it with recorded ownership. So no, um, still looking actually quite good. Um, as, a, as a moment to get back into uh, a crypto, Proof of work, that's had, I believe, when did Litecoin start? 2011. So 10 years of track record. Track record is important for investors, people with money to allocate money into, right? Uh, when they pick and choose an asset. Uh, that reliability is key and golden. So, or silver, uh, as Litecoin is digital silver, right? Uh, that is a what? Uh, like corners like to refer it to, and I'm kind of kind of with them. Um, anything else that is popping off? Let's uh, take a quick look at the Dow uh, stock markets today. Um, down 111 points. So we might be in a period where stocks actually underperform, underperform even with. Uh, Without any stimulus action or additional stimulus, uh, it is kind of a process where um, once they got used to this uh, free money from the Fed, it is something that can't be taken away uh, without these kind of events happening. Um, so, yeah, um, you guys are in the right space being in crypto for sure. Um, any other... Uh, outperformance by any other tokens. Fader doing quite well. Fader doing quite well up uh, 9%. Uh, it's been a great coin. It's been a great look at this. 2020 in the pennies. 2020 in the pennies. We, and it hit a high of $15. $15 indeed. Uh, if we kind of readjust this trend fib projection. Yeah, it's actually 
Um, oh, this is when we raise, shall we? Out of view. And this. Let's get this one. Here we go. Here we go. Strong recovery, isn't it? Three dollars seventy-three. We're back up nine fifty. So this this obviously plays into a network effect. Uh, Fader being a is it some sort of decentralized video streaming platform? Um, yep, yeah. disintermediating YouTube. And I've been actually on Twitch quite a bit actually uh, as a kind of a uh, viewer. And the network effects on the, these users who create channels is big. It is growing quite fast. Live streaming has been, I would say, last three to four years, been doing extremely well. Uh, eating away at YouTube's uh, kind of attention market, right? Again, back to that attention economy. Uh, so here we go for Fader, 1.618, $23. 2.618, $35. Anything beyond that, it will be an explosive blow off kind of uh, top moment, right? So 23, I would say, mm, looking at this recovery, I would say within two months, within two months anyway. So a uh, quick look at Hex. Hex being my preferred digital asset of choice because it now allows you to plan your future, allows you to earn coins on your coins trustlessly, right? And uh, we had a good retest yesterday, a uh, low of 7.4 cents, and we are rebounding nicely. And let's put a, a hike in Ashy. We still have red candles today. Uh, it's a solid red candle. Um, so maybe one or two more days uh, into the weekend, uh, we'll get a reset of the momentum, and 18-day 18 18 day average should come up and kind of provide support, like I was mentioning yesterday. Uh, okay, I think I shall end it there. Uh, quick look at Hex BTC. Hex BTC in Satoshi's, uh, 217 sats uh, is what is required to buy one Hex token. And the Hex token is the currency uh, used to buy T shares. T shares are what actually is the value driver of the Hex ecosystem. Um, return streams, income return streams are achievable and possible in crypto using Hex. So, very good stuff, very good performance. Uh, 260 sats is the high. Uh, I think we are about to, again, one or two more days we engage and get up to these levels uh 300 sats uh, should be achievable and if this uh projected me measured move is achieved what 320 sats uh or basically 50 percent more btc if you are wanting to uh, speculate on hex and get more btc uh there you go uh okay 18 minutes long, 18.3 minutes. Uh, I shall call this video to an end as my timer clicks down.